Hi, I'm Stephen Broderick from St. Ursula's College Toowoomba, and today I would like to look at solar graphs, how to make them and what they represent. This first image represents a one-day solar graph, which is the path of the sun. The image on the left is the negative, and the sun comes out as this brown colour. The image on the right is the Photoshop version. You can do these solar graphs over a week, month or even a year. The solar graphs offer direct proof of the tilt of the Earth's axis being 23.4 degrees. If the solar graph was produced without the axis being tilted, it would be the same every day. So for example, this next image, you can see the path of the sun. The slowest point or the lowest path of the sun is the winter solstice on June the 21st. The darker lines represent cloudy or rainy days. And you can see that the solar graph is gradually getting higher each day, indicating that the axis of the Earth is tilted. I made the solar graphs using monster tins or Pringle tins. The Pringle container is probably the best one. Most importantly, the pinhole has to be about a third of the way from the top. This is the negative, so when you get the negative out of the pinhole camera, the sun comes out as this brown colour. Eventually it needs to be photoshopped. The image is also upside down and reversed. This is indicated in this uh, graphic. You can see the image of the tree is upside down and reversed. So you need to Photoshop it to get the true image. This is the image flipped, but it hasn't been reversed. And once again, this is a negative. The sun comes out as a brown color. These are some of the earlier solar graphs I did. Uh, a seven day solar graph and a 12-week solar graph whereby I painted the inside of the tin black, but then the paint came off, so you don't need to do that at all. This is a one-day solar graph at St. Ursula's College, and you can see the path of the sun, and it sets behind the chapel, and it's been flipped and reversed and photoshopped. They really are quite pretty. This is another solar graph that was taken during the winter solstice, so you can see the path of the sun. The solar graph actually takes up about 170 degrees, so during winter and during a period of time either side of winter, you can fit in the path of the sun quite easily. But as the time goes by, the rotation of the Earth, and it, when the days are longer, you won't get the whole 170 degrees of viewing. Here are some solar graphs I did from the Gold Coast and various other places. So this is uh, Q1 in the background, and you can see the path of the sun there. And this is one I did over in Houston in the summertime. You can see the path of the sun there. This was done through a plate glass window. Uh, this solar graph, which are negatives, represent the path of the sun uh, done weekly, one day a week for several weeks. So you can see how from March to May, the altitude of the sun or the maximum, uh, maximum altitude of the sun is decreasing over a period of time. Also, here's a simultaneous solar graph that was done, one in Rockhampton and one in Toowoomba. And you can see in Toowoomba, the sun, sun's altitude only gets to about 40 degrees, 39 degrees. And over in Rockhampton, the altitude gets to about 44 degrees. So that's because of the location. And since one degree is about 100, 110 kilometres, Rockhampton is about uh, 500, 400 kilometres due north of Toowoomba. Here's a solar graph that's been taken off the web, and they're really quite pretty and colourful. You can see there's some reflection within the glass window there. This solar graph was taken at uh, Radio Telescope's research facility. And I'll just point out here the winter solstice down the bottom here and the summer solstice up there. The distance in degrees from the winter solstice to the summer sol solstice is approximately 2 times 23.5, which is about 47 degrees. This was a solar graph I did in summertime with a storm trooper, sorry, a death trooper. And you can see the sun, well, the altitude of the sun is quite high there, so you won't fit that in. Uh, this was one done in wintertime of a T-Rex and the sun over one day period. Most of the solar graphs I did with the St. Ursula's school pool, where I could secure the pinhole camera knowing that no one would touch it. And it has to be reinforced with tape, the Pringles tin, because of the rain and other uh, wind, etc. It needs to be quite secure. This is one of the first solar graphs I did, so you can see 
from the image here, if you look at this bushy tree here on the right, the bushy tree is actually over here on the left. So I haven't actually flipped that image. So this is where the sun is actually rising and setting. So it needs to be photoshopped better. Likewise, this one was done in September. And once again, you can see the bushy tree here on the right and the bushy tree is here on, over on the left. So that hasn't been uh, reversed either. And you can see as we're getting into September, it's getting close to the maximum altitude of the pinhole camera that we will be able to collect. So the pinhole cameras I use are made out of the Pringles tin. This is probably the best one. So what I do, I drill a hole through the Pringles tin and with the monster can, all you need to do is um, cut the lid off and use a pin or a thumbtack one third of the way from the top, put a hole in there. And then with the Pringles tin, if you cover that with alfoil, put a little pinhole in there, put tape on it, and then you have to wrap it securely in lots of tape to make it waterproof because the lid is clear, so it has to be uh, light proof. So you need to um, use lots and lots of tape. Make sure you can easily take that off. So I normally secure the lid on as well with some tape. And for the monster can, I used a spray can lid from uh, a tin of paint from Bunnings. Most schools have the Ilford's photographic paper, so this is what you need to put inside. Um, you don't have to do it in the dark room. You can quickly take it out and put it in, inside the tin. Make sure that the shiny side is facing the pinhole and make sure that it's secured properly inside. Sometimes when you're transporting the pinhole camera, the paper may move. So just be careful that it hasn't moved. It has to be directly opposite the pinhole. Use some black tape to make a shutter. So you can put a piece of black tape with the end looped over so you can easily take that off. And once you've got it all set, you transport it to where you want to set it up. So I had these two set up facing north. So once they're ready, you take off the shutter and just stick it on the tin somewhere. So you can see down here the shutter's been taken off and the pinhole is exposed, ready to take the image. Once you've done the image, you remove it from the pinhole camera. Now, you don't have to do this in darkness, so I just take it off quickly, put it under the photocopier, make sure you scan and colour, and I send it to myself, or you can um, open it up in a printer. Open up Photoshop, crop the image, then you then invert it, flip or rotate it, and adjust the levels. For example, this one was taken in America, the Tower of America is in the background. There's, it's a two-day solograph. So if you go into Image and Photoshop, Adjustments, Invert, and that makes the sky a nice blue color and the sun the nice white color. And you then flip the image and make adjustments with levels, curves, etc. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. So if you'd like to any, any more information, you can email me. And happy solographing. They really are colourful and quite pretty.